Most of you know that uh, Winnie is not a stranger to the school. He teaches in the graduate design uh, program here um, at the AA. And tonight also happens to coincide with the opening of the exhibition of uh, the, uh, the, 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 the work of the practice, which is uh, uh, happening next door and uh, will be opened uh, at the end of the, uh, uh, the lecture. Uh, Winnie's uh, uh, practice is called MVRDV, and it was founded in 1992 by Winnie and his partners uh, Jakob van Ries and Natalie de Vries, and is based in Rotterdam. One of the things that I think is uh, very important about uh, the nature of the work is uh, the actual uh, way in which the practice itself uh, operates. You'll see in many of the projects um, an attempt to really um, uh, blur the boundaries between uh, uh, various disciplines. Winnie himself uh, studied landscape architecture before studying architecture, and this is something that's very much evident in the work of, of the practice. Often you see the concepts uh, from landscape used as part of the interior of the projects. We could really say that many of the projects really develop this notion of the landscape of the interior uh, of the projects. I think the other thing is that the, the practice has attempted to work at a variety of different scales. They might work on small scale pieces of furniture on one, one point and then the next, next stage they are really working on very large scale urban projects and I think this is something, this kind of fluidity between various aspects of architecture, urbanism and small scale objects is something that really distinguishes their work. Uh, uh, equally I think what is interesting is that they don't have a singular or linear way of, uh, of developing their work. Uh, Rather, they really utilize a whole multiplicity of uh, methods of work in, in, in relation to, uh, to their project, which is, uh, which is very exciting. The thing that should be mentioned about uh, the exhibition in some way is that it really focuses on the models of, uh, uh, of, the, of, the, of the projects. There are, there are no, no drawings or no photographs of the built work, and this, I think, is also something important by excluding this, this material that you will see in the lecture I think what it does, it, it tends to reinforce the material condition of the models themselves, the fact that there's a sort of architecture as a kind of material practice that is reinforced in terms of the way in which the models themselves, for example, have been, uh, have been made. Um, the uh, exhibition of the work of uh, MVRDV also coincides with um, the exhibition of contrafactualism, uh, the results of the competition that was set by Cedric Price, which will be uh, upstairs in the front members room and also a workshop that was carried out by Shinegashira in Niigata uh, during the summer. I would like to thank Andrew McKenzie, uh, Kate Jones and Karen Beatty as well as other members of the exhibition crew for their great work. Would you please uh, join me in welcoming Winnie Mas. Thanks. Does this work? Um, dear audience, I was uh, today a bit um, attracted in what I should do. Recently I've given more lectures at AA. In February I, could, uh, I had the opportunity to make uh, a lecture on Firemax, which, uh, uh, which tries already to, to combine our work with a kind of uh, more general um, uh, application on, on, uh, uh, on the technique of pressure. So I won't repeat that lecture. Tonight, I won't try to read our work in that context. A forthcoming book on that subject will um, it will be published in December. In the end, it's there, and um, uh, uh, from that moment on, uh, uh, it's it's available. So that's one thing. Second thing, last July, uh, I had opportunity together with Brett and Patrick and other people uh, around us to within the 150th anniversary of of uh, the AA to make uh, or, or to have a conversation, a debate on the word datascape. Scape is in the air and datascape is there, one could say. And it's so we tried to push that last year on different schools, that topic, to study um, by having datascapes the topic of pluralism, of massivity and of uh, the loss of extravaganza, in which actually architecture has become a kind of, uh, has, has bifurcated in two directions. In one direction, it has become urbanism, since it loses indeed the general attention, and on the other hand, it 
has become interior. How to formulate then? Still an architectural topic. Datascape could help. It could try to um, uh, develop indeed hidden logics behind these masses, hidden logics behind this, this world of numbers. This Datascape topic will continue. It will, we hope to finalize it by the end of the school year in, uh, in Juni July here and at other institutes and to finish it by publication and, and an um, exhibition one year after this. That's why I come now to my point, maybe, or to the start of my point. This exhibit is not ambi ambitious, it's modest. It will not show what has been built, so I want to show that in this lecture, it will be part number one. It will not show an imaginable hypothesis, since that has been covered maybe by these two other lectures and by the forthcoming presentations. So it doesn't show, and even doesn't show current thoughts within the office for the work in progress. So that I show you as well within this lecture to cover that aspect. So let's start with this uh, uh, series of slides which I've taken with me, uh, which wants to cover then those uncleared areas of this, uh, of this model show. This could be seen as the, as the exhibition as we started at the NIE half a year ago, in which we, uh, where we wanted to show the model as a place to, uh, to be again part of the, of the architectural debate. And it wants to state that although we apply enormous amount of techniques, of virtual techniques, we still see the virtual technique as a kind of extension of reality more than a kind of virtual reality. And in that way, we want to be this, show this modesty of models by showing them on themselves in its purest way, even having these suckles uh, to, to turn them into a kind of monument. This modesty has, of course, the, uh, the purpose that it wants to show the state of art. What can a young office make these days? It doesn't want to provoke a thoroughly thought statement. Maybe because one needs definitely more work to conceive the different corners of a heavy notion, since the singular one would lose itself into over-interpretation. I mean by that that, uh, that we are very happy <coughs> that we could have lots of commissions already in the first three years, lots of exercises, so that not the one singular over-interpreted uh, uh, building, which is definitely a problem for a lot of starting office, would be there. It would not be a masterpiece in advance. We would like uh, to gather information and, to, and to, uh, to grow it gradually into a world of observation. And I'm very happy that we were able to acquire different jobs. It was maybe lucky to be in the Netherlands these years, where the current economy led to lots of building activities and building production, in which the classical 1% of experiments which every country must have, obtains substantial amount and where youngness is a serious market opportunity that even is subsidized by the government. I will shortly show these realizations later after these uh, slides. Two models will be lacking in the, in the show, the VPRO model and the Berlin model. This is due to the short preparation time we had here and to their already demanded appearance at other exhibitions. So I will show them partly on slides. Back to the imaginable hypo hypothesis. I already quoted that it doesn't mean that our work suspects hy hypothesis. No, the possible reading of it has been already described this year at Pharmax lecture and the Datascape lecture. That will be followed by ho hopefully kind of forthcoming exhibitions. So this could be seen as a preambula uh, exhibition. But both studies start to discover, to enroll or to envisage positions within the day-to-day -day reality of the surrounding massivity and pluriformity in which this single architectural object ceases to exist. Doesn't this lead to the awareness that architecture now indeed is bifurcating in two directions, into urbanism and into interior? When architecture becomes urbanism, it enters the realm of quantities, of infrastructure, of time and of relativism. A realm where things come, things go. 
events occur or take place in apparently unorganized patterns, the very chaos of which possesses hidden logics, allowing gravities from this tapestry to emerge or to be emerged from within this endlessness uh, of objects itself. These gravities reveal themselves when they are sublimated beneath certain assumed maximized circumstances or within certain maximized constraints. Gravities then appear as capes of the data behind it, like a pressure cooker in, nature, uh, in na natural sciences that could be applied to architecture then. But how to work with this urban matter? How to reveal these hidden gravities? If progress remains the main reason for research, the hypothesis remains the most effective way to deal with it. In order to understand the behavior of massivity, we have to push it to the limits and adopt this extremizing as a technique of architecture research. Assuming a possible maximization, and the word maximum already implies rules, society will be confronted with the law and bylaws that it has been set up and that are extrapolated with an iron logic. It will start to question these regulations due to that. Under these maximizing circumstances, every demand, rule or logic is manifested and appears in pure and unexpected forms that goes beyond artistic intuition or known geometry it, and it replaces it by research. Form becomes result of such an extrapolation or assumption as a datascape of the demands behind it. It shows the demands and norms balancing between ridicularization and criticism, sublimizing hopefully pragmatics. It connects there the morale with the normal, the possibilities found to criticize the norm and the morale behind it. It hopes to construct a possible argument and to replace artistic intuition by research, hypotheses that observe, extrapolate, analyze and criticize our behavior. That text could be said as the, uh, uh, in, in, in referring it to these two books I was mentioning. Holland. I was telling already what happens in Holland. It's the densest population in uh, Europe. It's a kind of misa of, uh, of density. Still, it doesn't feel like that. But unless that, that like that, it helps us to start at our office. And it starts and helps us to make production. And helps to liberate ourselves from the singular object. And to try to find the corners of this observation of data scapes. In that way, all these models can be conceived or seen as a, as a data scapes, maybe more hidden because they are not purely and they are mixed with different demands. But behind it, one could see these different areas. I want to go through it shortly. Berlin, that's where we started. And we still have a kind of uh, weak heart for, for Berlin. And gradually we are uh, more dealing with it. I will show you that later. Where the European competition in 92 helped us uh, to get some publicity and to, uh, to get our first ideas around the world. Putting, pushing program to a kind of limit. These 284 houses in the kind of uh, thinnest slab thinkable so that all the area around it can be still part of the Berlin uh, uh, wall zone and still be liberated from program. In that way, it would, uh, um, we would squeeze the program into a kind of vertical neighborhood and by a kind of uh, intersecting it with, uh, uh, with a kind of holes in the building at the critical points, it suddenly, uh, which was uh, which in a way connected with the, the surrounding or to the bridge or to the next uh, uh, houses around it, it would be turned into a sculpture and wouldn't be have been a sculpture in advance. So I was happy that due to that suddenly the sculpture would be there. More what happened at that moment when you would squeeze program suddenly houses are squeezed between each other and there it questions the word ideal which is so much part of our former generation which wanted to have ideal houses, ideal constraints, ideal suggestions. We could easily imagine thousands of an I ideals if it's this a cross house or a kind of snake house or your stair house but more what, uh, what happened when we would were pushing things under pressure suddenly rest houses would uh, appear forms which were in between and would actually 
be even more curious than the other ones. And it helps that under this pressure, certainly a certain awareness of your neighbor would be there when this one would penetrate that area. It gave us a first commission, a mini one, of course. The entrance gates of the, the, uh, the National Park of Holland, uh, the, uh, the Hoge Veluwe, next to the Krala Muren Museum. And there we found two extreme uh, 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 demands, one could say, behind it. One, that it would be housing for uh, at the three entrances of the, of the park for the forest uh, people, so really green people with birds on their uh, shoulders, etc. And on the other hand, it was the, the, the modern museum in the heart of the, of the park which wanted to have a kind of address on the map and want, wanted to appear at, uh, at the boundaries. So what we chose is the original forms of their houses of the foresters who were already there and manipulated in, in different directions or extruding it and enlarging it to the entrance which is more or less there or diminishing it as a volume towards uh, the, uh, the, the park so that it were, would be uh, less there and to, uh, and to have uh, to let them meet with the, with the with the surrounding at that very moment, or if it's a tree, or if it's a house, uh, which would do something with it. it I want to show it, because it was our uh, first realized work, and what we said as well, we have three entrances, so let's make three buildings, so that every entrance has a kind of uh, uh, intricacy, but as well as a kind of very banal te technique for us to, uh, uh, to work with three different uh, building techniques. So it helped for us in a kind of mini course to uh, accelerate our knowledge. So there was a wooden one, and there was a brick one, and there was a, uh, uh, an iron one. Uh, the brick one, I think, is uh, in that way my favorite still. It's next to a kind of the same type of house, which is, uh, which is say, normal. But to put every, um, um, all the bricks everywhere and all around it, and even the doors and uh, the windows are made of brick, we, we put us in a kind of extreme uh, difficult position to work with that material and to learn it in, in the first phase of our, uh, uh, in a, in our office to, to, s to look at extremizing conditions of that ma material. So what we did in the end is by having one piece of glass, uh, lots of the, uh, the pieces in between the stones, the mortar has been uh, uh, replaced by plastic so that even a kind of glass mortar now can be seen in between the stones to give efficient light within that uh, building. The second building we got. Houses in Amsterdam. Extreme uh, uh, position where, and I ex I'm especially don't show the diagrams now, or don't show all these things because that was part of the other lecture. I want to explain it through the it work itself. For me it's a kind of test as well if this work tonight. Uh, what is there? It's, a, uh, it's Amsterdam West. It's, fan it's fantastic, although uh, no one goes there. It is, uh, it's designed by Van Eestre, who was a former uh, urbanistic uh, designer uh, uh, quite, uh, quite well. He designed enormous pieces of grass and water, which would uh, disconnect uh, uh, the kind of uh, East European slabs, which uh, were in fashion in those days, in the 50s. And, but in the 70s and 80s and 90s, uh, in its wish of Amsterdam to fill up as much as possible, lots of the parts of, the, of these areas were filled up with kind of monsters of different kinds. And we were asked as an office, as a, as, as a challenge, and that's how they use <coughs> youngness at the moment, uh, can you fill this last piece with uh, another hundred apartments? So we said, after some thinking, well, maybe that would be nice, but then let's make uh, a housing block which is like Van Eestre did, so a kind of normal, um, say, Eastern uh, German block, but then uh, with the, the footprint which is the smallest stickable. And so to make only a slab so that there will be a plaza around it. I won't have a slide of that, but and uh, that uh, you don't fill this whole area with, uh, with objects. Then Van Eestre uh, said, although he's died, that this that we should respect, of course, the viewing lines of the neighbors. So we have to cut here pieces, we have to cut here program away, and we were left over with 13 houses. What shall we do with them? And we hang them on, the, on this facade, thus having houses as a kind of mini villas with views to everywhere, and uh, uh, thus giving life to the gallery 
and uh, because you have a, another neighbor or, or, a, or a public balcony beside it and having a 3D effect more or less of the plaza below. So this is, um, it has been opened uh, last April. You have the, the plaza with its, um, with its roofs and its 3D life. Here how the, the, the galleries get uh, events and get in that way uh, uh, possible uh, life or difference. Uh, we hated doors at the beginning. So that's another technique of, of when, when we started this office that we say we do one thing not or one th another thing to the maximum. And uh, this, uh, this case it was uh, that we didn't want to have windows and that we only wanted to have uh, doors in it. So uh, we use them as much as possible, and uh, which leads that every house would have more doors than one, would have even more balconies uh, due to that. The only thing which we uh, we were running out of money due to that, it's uh, uh, we made already this suspended houses and then these uh, enormous amount of doors, so that our what happens in Holland normally is that you give something to the uh, inhabitants where they can choose or select uh, a kind of a private topic within it. Normally it's, it's the tile of the, uh, the choice of the tiles of the kitchen and of the bathroom, but since we don't have them anymore uh, due to our uh, economical escapades, that we could only give the balconies uh, to them. And that's what happened. They selected a color or a material which is now as a kind of frozen uh, um, identity on the, uh, and uh, appears, or colors even, <laughs> their interior right at the moment and uh, as a kind of piece of pride. Oh, sorry. A double house in Utrecht. This house um, is on a very, ne a very beautiful spot in Utrecht. It's near a, a fantastic park designed uh, by Sochers and it has a long garden. It's a series of modernism it's behind, it's on the left side, and a series of uh, 19th century on the right side. We were asked uh, to fill in, uh, again for a very uh, tight budget, uh, a double house with two families. Um, one was our client, which is this side, and one is, uh, is a client who was done by a friend of us, an architect in Amsterdam, Jarno Masterbroek. We said to them, to each other, let's work together, because you have, as a starting office, you have to find anything which is possible, of course, while well, you know it. And you uh, and desperately, we, uh, and we started to work together. We squeezed the building initially because it was a very long site. We said, okay, let's try to make a high building as high as possible so that the municipality wanted to have a, a so-called Herren house, uh, a, a really a, a good house, would have it by uh, all means. So the house is now six meters uh, deep and it has four and a half stories. So it turns into kind of two tower apartments. Uh, no, said our client, I don't want to have it because then I get a kind of house which is like this because I have 40% of the budget only and the others have 60% which is like this. <laughs> so can't I, can't I, uh, um, I don't want to have such a house. Then we said maybe you don't see the advantages. If we make a kind of a rubber line in between uh, you two, then you can make, you can have a kind of kitchen uh, a home. Uh, next to the gardens, you can have nothing here. You can have a kind of wide panoramic uh, uh, television room uh, on the third floor, and you can suspend your uh, your sleeping rooms here on that wall. And then you can have even kind of hidden patio with a uh, hidden outside uh, bathroom on top, so that you would have indeed the highest and most royal uh, living area <laughs> thinkable, and combine it with a kind of panoramic view on the gardens and the park. And that coincided uh, enormously with uh, them, their approach. They didn't want to live on the lowest floor. They work in the tropical areas and they, they were a bit afraid of Holland. So they said, let's make a piano nobile and let's make a guest room here. Let's spend our uh, bedrooms there and have a kind of studio apartment on top and a kind of patio uh, uh, on that top again. So in that way, the, lamp, the, the, the paralyzed and the blind, in a way, helped each other to realize the unknown. It was as if under pressurized constraints, suddenly such a house could uh, appear. You see this, uh, the, the thickness or better thinness of the house 
and living in between plants. It will be planted uh, this uh, autumn with acacia trees so that you will be really surrounded by, uh, by forest. And you see the slots raising up to the roof and going down uh, to the kitchen table. Our biggest com uh, commission up till now was the VPRO Broadcasting Company. It helped us uh, uh, to liberate us from our masters. We could, uh, in the end, uh, work freely all day and not only at the nights or in the weekends due to that. Because he, uh, it's a young, or it's, a, it's an avant-gardistic broadcasting uh, company. It has been, um, uh, the Dutch system is like, it's very dispersed, like Holland, or it's a very pluralistic in a way. It has a Catholic uh, broadcasting uh, unit. It has a Protestant one, and it has an avant-gardistic one. That's this one. It wanted to, but under the, in a kind of uh, combat or a match with uh, the, 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 the commercial TV, they are now reorganizing themselves, they are grouping themselves, and they want to profile themselves. That's why youngness comes into vision again. Because when 10 broadcasting companies are competing, suddenly someone needs someone else, something else in order to profile himself. And that helped us to, to start this office. We, what we gave and what we developed with the VPRO, it's a 10,000 square meter building in the media park in, uh, in, uh, in Hilversum, where we uh, were not allowed to build higher than that line due to the Dutch condition that it's a kind of hilly site uh, filled up with forests, but where the building should be within the or underneath the trees. Uh, even with massive program. So what we uh, then try to push, what, what we made, made uh, with this building is that we, we squeeze the building as maximum as possible. We turned it not into a kind of double loaded corridor building as you all know and which are appearing around your highways. It is uh, a, a 55 meter deep plan on two sides. So it's a square block uh, which wants to occupy, which in that way say, uh, leaves the nature as open as possible and wants to study or wants to come up with solutions how to have the ultimate interior and how uh, could indeed difference be uh, gathered in such a, uh, uh, such a block and even lead to, um, uh, to a kind of connection between the individual position and the kind of generic um, uh, approach of the building. Why? connecting all the floors by different means, so you will see different of them, um, we would have and a, a, a super connection from one floor to the other, and secondly, it would give indeed private spaces or different floor-to-floor -floor heights at every imaginable uh, floor thinkable. Here you see, for instance, here will be an access that's now finished, uh, finished by uh, this parking garage in the middle of the building. It will be uh, thrown back so to end this action as brutal as possible, uh, the action as brutal as possible in a kind of black hole or blue uh, anti junkie uh, light hole. <laughs> then heels up further uh, to the, the next floor and there steps up in a kind of series terraces to the, uh, to the roof. And from there you can occupy the building in different means as a kind of uh, a way of urbanizing these internal landscape in, by all its means. This is part of this route, which then occurs within the building, where you go up, get the, to the hill, and continue on this kind of stacked floors, for instance. <coughs> Sorry, uh, continue further. You missed uh, one slide of the, uh, of the occupation of the terraces with all kind of stuff. I try again. Yeah, that's this one. Because that's the moment that they were moving in. And actually, at that moment, I was incredibly happy that that architecture the neatness of, or the smoothness of the emptiness was uh, in a kind of more, more boring than the moment that uh, uh, this enormous amount of uh, IKEA, IKEA furniture entered uh, the building and was swallowing the terraces by, uh, in, in a way we could never uh, uh, expect and which is now still a kind of uh, term of negotiation. Uh, this is the restaurant part where you can work and eat together and which brings you in the end of the route to the roof where we actually transplanted the, uh, the landscape which was there and which we, are, uh, which we have stuffed now with electricity and data cables so that you can here work under kind of sublimized conditions with the highest floor to ceiling uh, height and with even a kind of uh, a private lift stop within the grounds. 
that is the building for the moment, not more, not less. And, we, and, and it, in that way, it could be seen as part of this Firemax experiment I was already referring to. Uh, this, this pressure cooker to develop difference, or to develop uh, um, uh, moments of resistance, because that's maybe what we are looking at. At the moment that you find resistance, when you put pressure on th some things, then it obtains maybe architectural qualities, because their individualism uh, enters the world of, uh, of the generic. Just beside it, we, last week we finished this building. There's the VPRO building, and this is the FVU building. Another small educational broadcasting company, 1,500 square meters. This is the famous slope of Hilversum. Uh, yes, I'm sorry, but Holland doesn't have a lot of slopes, so that means that uh, this is almost uh, sacrosanct. And it, uh, uh, what we actually could do, uh, we found this uh, spot. We, we knew that in the, in the law, it was said that you could build here almost 5,000 square meters due to a kind of gentleman's agreement of 15 years ago. Uh, we used a lawyer to find this out, and then uh, we said to the government, uh, what we can do, we can use this uh, to sell this uh, ground, uh, the piece of ground to indeed someone who wants to put in 5,000 square meters, or we have maybe a solution for you, is that we have a 1,500 square meter program uh, where actually maybe the invisibility could be part of the, uh, of the, of the project and turns it so that it really uh, would, uh, uh, it would take the site but would give it back in a way to, uh, to the surroundings. So what we did, we uh, lifted the ground uh, uh, a bit. We made here an uh, enormous grass field up the, uh, on top as a kind of public balcony which overlooks then the park and uh, put the program underneath. This is how it then appears from, uh, uh, from the ground and uh, in the end it gives a kind of uh, super window to the, to the park. Underneath a lava garden uh, will has been placed so that you can have there a kind of bicycle stops and uh, drop-offs. That about our realizations. That's and which add up now with the exhibition, which is only about models. The third thing which I want to explain uh, today, because I now I, I told you about the, the maybe the theory behind it, Pharmax and datascapes. I talked a bit about the realizations. The third thing I what I wanted to do uh, today is to um, to show something of the current topics within the office or what can be expected the coming uh, half year. It wants to deal in a further way with this topic of densification, with this topic of emptiness versus fullness. And I mean this, and this, mean, this doesn't mean literally only, it means as well that it could be uh, areas that could be described of heavy investment on one side, or low investment on the other, si other si uh, side, on a kind of an infrastructure maybe there, on a kind of new nature, uh, in this uh, area. About these two topics, about infrastructure and about the new nature, I want to uh, start um, a forthcoming, say, uh, hopefully, investigation of the office. What, I, what, is, uh, um, what I want to explain as well with it is that um, due to our activities, that, uh, I'm very happy with it, but uh, is that, uh, that when you start a kind of topic which you sincerely uh, want, that after a while, after two or three years, it get kind of follow-ups. I'm going to show that through these two projects, the, the infrastructure and the, uh, the new nature topic. Uh, infrastructure in Holland is uh, still, uh, like here in, the, in England, a kind of uh, calm thing. It means, it means that it has been designed by a special uh, organization which ha up the, has still the, the power of it and controls everything and which is very hard to deal with as an architect. We were happy that we could um, a kind of commission for this zone. It was the second commission within our infrastructural uh, 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 behavior, one could say. I'm not showing the first one, but which is in a model actually at the ex exhibit, which, which wants to do something with a kind of hiddenness of these road systems. This is near to Rotterdam, the north corner of Rotterdam. And uh, what, we, um, what we found out, that there is a kind of uh, noise zone around it, which is not used at the moment. It's totally um, uh, covered with barns, with motocross areas, uh, all the stuff you, uh, you, you, you know quite well. And if we want to densify, if we want to uh, accelerate our inv investments, maybe we should do something more with it. How can we do that? 
So what we said, when this is say the kind of current motorway at that very position, how to turn that into a kind of urban boulevard was the topic. And we said, we, let's not, uh, when we have to extend that road with another four lanes uh, in the nearby five years, let's not do it direct, directly linked to that road, but let's um, keep kind of maximum distance as possible in such a way that suddenly all kinds of addresses in the town will be part of this motorway system and turn into a kind of motor of activities. From that moment on, we, start have, we had to go into the hardcore of, uh, of, uh, of uh, motorway design. And um, so we could imagine that we had different uh, speeds in this zone, uh, that some of them would be 120, some of them 90, 70, up to the 50 kilometer an hour speeds, which is uh, normal for Dutch in, uh, interiors of the city. And we described it, how it would be uh, when you use the speed, how long you need to get out of the street and to, uh, to bow away, what kind of curves you need per speed, in that way horizontally and, and vertically, how uh, many meters you need to weave in between the next uh, speed. And uh, by doing that, we could add it up like this, so that in such a way you could make plots in between, which have a, a kind of direct access on different uh, uh, speeds, on different terms, and at 120 kilometers, at 90 here, at 70 there, and at 50 there. And in that way, we could uh, give to the town an enormous series of addresses which would be linked to this motorway. So there's A20 number 30, A20 number 31, etc. And would lead to a kind of lace, Brussels lace zone almost, of, uh, of weaving roads to such a pattern which would be 400 meter wide and would exactly be, be within the framework of the, of the noise contour of the, of the town. It would turn, uh, this, is actually, this is occupied by the uh, normal office blocks, 40 by 40, and uh, showing what, that would, what kind of time, time it would be and what type of road experience one could have within such a uh, uh, future town. Of course, it was, uh, you can do a lot with this lace, you can extend it uh, even more to the north or the south, and at certain places we didn't have enough space. There we had to bend this lace and to uh, turn it in this direction in such a space so that at that very moment uh, we could uh, even have uh, different uh, entrances at the same building or you could imagine a kind of vertical uh, urbanism in the end even after the Milan Senaar competition where uh, Koop Himmelblau already tried, tried to imagine that. We maybe now find uh, a tool due to the pressure and the compression to, uh, to do that. Uh, that would be then the, the town and would even give kind of facades to kind of parks which are uh, surrounding that park, which are surrounding that uh, town and would help as well uh, for the success of that park. It would mean that a current division, current number of cars, with a current division between transit traffic, like this, and location traffic, uh, would be altered into something like that. It would be uh, uh, almost tripled the whole traffic, but as well only in the local traffic. So it, in that way it means that the use of this type of roads would be in incredible and would be uh, uh, of a kind of extreme economic investment in that way. Of course there's uh, other weaknesses in this and that's another thing which we maybe want to learn is that as soon as we see an Achilles heel we jump into it. And uh, this time it's uh, sound and noise, of course. And in Holland, it's, that's a heavy uh, topic with the current uh, uh, airport discussion, for instance. <laughs> so, but what we then found out is when we look to the different speeds, 120 going down to 50, that the cupola of sound, which is around it, is in a way, uh, is the biggest actually due to the 120 kilometer uh, uh, speeds. And that the other ones are actually minimal to that. So we are still within the same mainframe I could say and we could do something with that we could put screens in it and as soon as you put screens in it then you get a kind of envelopes like this a kind of farm like envelopes where all the housing could be in it we could um, extend uh, office program uh, in th that way which combines of course with capacity of the road so that the white would be housing and the gray would be office which is kind of normal uh, Dutch vision 40 to 60 percent or we could go maybe into more in a kind of 3, 3D effect on it. And here actually our collaboration with, uh, with research institutes helps a lot 
But sometimes we can't do that in the office. And then uh, the places uh, like the AA and places like the Berlage Institute indeed have a reason to exist. What we uh, did with uh, Penelope Dean, one student in uh, Berlage, is we investigated the effect of the screen in 3D. And I'll, I'll come back to this could be seen as a datascape, uh, a part of that book as well. Um, this, is a this is the road. This is the possible, for instance, parking block or, or office block, which wants to protect the, uh, the sound from behind. So we made first a kind of short block. What would be the effect on the contour lines uh, around it? And what you can see when you have the different heights, that is, uh, in these contour lines of the DBA, the noise contour changes. And well, in such a way, when you put them on top of each other, that you get a figure like this. So this is the sound contour. This is a impossible to build. And the blue is the position where you can place office in. This is the block. Here is the highway. That suddenly these blobs are impossible to use. As soon as we use such, such a short piece of parking garage, it would not be sufficient to have housing in it. There's almost no green program, only on the lowest part you see that. So we have to extend this block in this research, what we did. So that's what we uh, extended it, the contour lines changes uh, in height as well. Suddenly there are some blobs appearing, uh, which actually is the housing parameter. And here I see the office parameters underneath. It leads to a figure like this. Again, this is the office parameter. And here, suddenly, these two housing, housing could appear behind this screen. Still not the topic which, which, which I would, would become uh, um, impressed by. But still, it's a thing which we already know, one, one would say. It would be fantastic if we would make housing next to the highway where you can open up your doors, where you could sit on the balconies without having these problems with sound. So we went one step uh, further, uh, enlarged the, the parking garage again. Again, a series of height con uh, contours combination with sound. Uh, again, a kind of extrapolation of this. And then you see suddenly, and this is the contour of the office block, that suddenly here you can uh, imagine housing appearing next to the highway. And that would lead to such a, a kind of figures, or say such a kind of say landscapes or possible volumes which look even more this is the housing volume which uh, uh, get a kind of unexpectedly beautiful uh, shapes which are more Indonesian than Holland ever could imagine <laughs> and uh, uh, which if you start to double it that's the next phase you make two parking garage and you imagine the gap in between what happens then is that suddenly this uh, kind of excavations, uh, this kind of grottos could be imagined, or kind of grottos which are designed by, uh, uh, by data and not by intuition, and appear as a kind of super Portman uh, halls uh, next uh, to the highway, and uh, which con con consist of a kind of uh, beauty which we, we never had, uh, would have expected. I'm glad that this research continues at the moment. And if you knew, now uh, finalizing uh, a study on uh, this kind of doubling these roads in combination with this noise study for two other sites in Holland, the south axis in Amsterdam and the north axis in, uh, in Rotterdam again. I want to, comp but as soon as we show this kind of interest, it meant that other developers started to ask us on this topic. One of the develop one of the topics which was there is a, a, a center for the for the uh, one of the Phoenix locations is kind of the major uh, housing operations in Holland. You have to build 800,000 houses, and they are split in, into units of 20,000. Every 20,000 needs a kind of uh, center, so this is one of them. And uh, there is a road here, kind of mini highway. There is a railway here. We had to fill up this site totally with program. Then we said, uh, should we do that? It's in the middle of a kind of housing tapestry around it. Or can't we double the roads in such a way that we don't have to occupy this area with roads, that you can form addresses next to this par parallel road? And uh, this is one part of the study, to give access in a very s smooth way, and in such a way that we could push the program up to the limits of this uh, street, so that you would get a kind of main street along this highway, and a kind of park zone uh, on the southern part of the center, and in which uh, due to this pressure of the program, turns this main street even in a kind of eastern island uh, collection of uh, objects, of buildings. 
Um, this plan is now under realization and we are doing the first phase, the shopping center. And I want to show it because it wants to, uh, due to this pressure, it wants to occupy infrastructure in a kind of banal but fantastic way. And it's, uh, uh, it deals with the aspect that you want to have cars everywhere and that you want to, to from a car, you want to go into a cafe or into a church, into the department store or into your house. And but that you don't want to see this car as soon as you are within the shopping constraints, in the shopping world. So we, we did, it's a 70,000 square meter block. Uh, what we, we did, we, we made a parking garage, uh, say 40 meters uh, wide or deep, 160 meter long, uh, about six floors. And then we started to cut this garage in such a way and extrude it up to the maximum so that you would have a kind of possible road in, within the foam here which leads you up to the top and which would cause a kind of niches to be inhabited by program or it could be food, non-food, uh, church, library, sport hall um, and uh, 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 medical services. And in such a way it would lead to a building where access from the car would be everywhere and a kind of pedestrian zone would be on top of it and uh, having a kind of combination of this paradox and turn a kind of horizontal shopping center into a vertical one. This is how the first phase actually ended with the different occupations uh, on this uh, area. And here you see kind of a twin set of, uh, of plans always, a set of parking and a set of occupation on top, leading to from uh, the top to the bottom. Uh, it has, in the second phase, it has, due to the financial constraints, we had to widen up parts of the building um, I mean, CNA doesn't want to have a 30-meter band, so it wants to have a 60-meter band. The offices want to have a smaller band. The library want to have a wider band, the sports hall there uh, as well. So that means that on one side of the facade, the, we keep a kind of straight facade, and on the other side, we actually uh, uh, were confronted with almost a kind of terraced way of facading, which is now indeed occupied by an enormous series of boxes of different uh, um, different gesture and different program and which would lead indeed now to the uh, a kind of uh, uh, indeed a kind of modest starting point for a vertical uh, center or to occupy or to use the car uh, uh, and infrastructure in a vertical way. Uh, can you change the... I want to finish uh, this uh, small lecture but that's about infrastructure and about the sequence of, uh, of possible commissions. The other series uh, is about a new nature, which, we, uh, which is not only literal a topic, one could say it's, uh, it's a kind of transcendental topic as well. It's there, everywhere. Every landscape is occupied by something else. And it's not ancient, it's, it can be considered immediately as new. So even the most monumental parts of our countryside have become objects of commercial uh, interpretation. If it's uh, the, the Ralph Lauren one, or if it's the Alps, with the most busiest uh, uh, points uh, on Earth almost. Uh, if it's our new uh, technology to make nature, which helps to provoke uh, this topic. If it's already uh, the topic of densification, which demands for uh, even built uh, uh, new nature. Or even it's a uh, uh, our demand for leisure, which has changed, uh, as everyone already experienced, um, which leads to other type of landscapes, which leads even to um, other type of, uh, of human beings, one could say. How to deal with that topic in our current societies? And I bring this up because it could be the kind of contramal, the kind of no, the anti-form of the, of the densified area. It could be seen as a world which could be explored in other ways. It could deal with liberty, it could, can deal with lightness and not with heaviness. It can deal with uh, CO2 instead of uh, CO. It can deal uh, 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 with uh, pigs instead of human beings, etc. So it has an incredible material to, to be developed. The first time we could do that was in Berlin, of course, again. Uh, a year ago in uh, Potsdam for the Bundesgartenschau, the kind of national garden exhibition uh, behind the castle of Schinkel, 
uh, the, no, I mean the uh, Saint Souci Palace. Um, there was a kind of valley designed by a landscape architect of Lenné, which could be occupied by plants and by uh, housing. Uh, the shape of that valley here is the, uh, the Saint Souci Palace. Uh, it's, it's incredible. Again, this kind of weird modern shapes, contemporary shapes. It's, uh, what I want to do is to make here this into a park and to have here neighborhoods uh, installed in it, just this normal housing uh, stuff uh, in uh, Berlin. And uh, we question that seriously, because if you do that, you don't have a valley, but a kind of a corridor in between uh, the castle and the, kind of and the pastoral landscape. So, so let's turn it first into a landscape and then try to occupy it by uh, the housing. And the topic is, is interesting of a, of a Buga, of the Bundesgartenschau, uh, because uh, how to make an exhibition in days where you can exhibit spaces everywhere and where you can even visit sites by computer, can't we still, do we need to, to make uh, an exhibition space of plants? So we started to imagine, couldn't we make uh, the, the final exhibition area on Earth, in a way, by uh, putting all plants imaginable together. So we investigated all the plants uh, from A till Z, from Acacia to Zinnia, and uh, totally struck by it. And let's imagine that we put them as a kind of Ark of Noé, once uh, together so that you never have to uh, redesign an, uh, uh, a buga again. And that we mixed up uh, with uh, different types of uh, leisure, uh, which was part of the program. Sorry that it's upside down. Um, these are series of demands they were installing. We could, uh, in that way, uh, turn that whole field into a kind of vegetal Manhattan in a kind of uh, a plant city, which occupies the limits uh, more than, uh, than only the, the limitations. And uh, due to its difference, uh, of course, how to design that. So what we did, we only made a kind of alphabetical zones in the park so that uh, you would not uh, conceive any con composition, but say that the ugliest plant, due to its uh, position in al alphabetical order, would be near to the most ecological or the most uh, beautiful one. And so to go beyond taste, to go beyond ecology in that, that way. And it would turn into a kind of field of difference where actually pluriformity becomes an object and uh, uh, which could be discussed as such, as a way of treating it. Um, but what would be more interesting is how after this buga, actually that land would change into a way of, uh, uh, of living. Uh, so what we calculated is for per plot how much it would cost in maintenance costs and, um, and uh, how uh, in that way developers could uh, take part of that program and change it into a, uh, a gymnasium or into a dwelling due to that cost figure. So in that way uh, uh, expensive houses suddenly could occupy the rose gardens and the cheap houses would be in between the bushes of Ligustrum. Um, it would that led to such a configuration of uh, housing, suddenly installed on that uh, uh, almost silicon valley of plants, and giving this then to, uh, to Berlin as a kind of uh, valley of experiments, where indeed uh, the buga would freeze into uh, eternity and would uh, uh, have a kind of uh, last uh, uh, posture. We didn't win that competition. What we, uh, but we got a commission immediately afterwards to, uh, to make a park for uh, a part of Holland. This is Utrecht, the central part. This is the old town of Utrecht. It's about 250,000 houses, uh, people. And then this is new uh, with 30,000 uh, houses. And uh, done by Riek Bakker, uh, the current Van Eestri in Holland. And the, the, she designed, uh, because this is another municipality, she, she designed a kind of buffer zone in between. Uh, which she called Central Park. And she asked us to make that Central Park. So we initially immediately started to question, of course, the buffering aspects between those communities. Although they, these might be liberal and these might be socialist, I think in this time, uh, uh, that, that in modernity, one cannot imagine that, and even in the highest democracies in the world, that we still are making a kind of uh, Berlin-esque zones of... Di of uh, 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 of spreading uh, difference. So what we suggested is uh, uh, that typology we already had developed in, the, uh, in Berlin to put it on this constraint and to turn in this kind of sea of uh, mediocrity, 
suddenly a kind of tapestry, tapestry of connections, a kind of uh, indeed a kind of digital uh, uh, city, which could turn this uh, tapestry into a kind of very hard, into a kind of even a, a, an area where you could develop uh, more than you uh, would protect. And that's maybe a key of the current parks, and I can see that in the economical value, for instance, here in London as well, where the sites around the park have the, have the highest uh, economical value, that maybe that could be a tool for such a, an area to develop it further. 300 hectares, that means it equates more or less uh, 3 billion uh, dollars in value, economical value. It's almost a saving pot where you can do something with it. So that's what we uh, did. Uh, first, we put in all kind of uh, possibilities, imaginable uh, collection they wanted to have, they wanted to have uh, uh, installed. Um, and we, we could combine it with, uh, say, uh, uh, commercial programs and uh, which were now in this neighborhood. We said, skip them. Let's please insert it in, the kind of, uh, in this kind of central zone so that you would give life to the park and would uh, turn it into a center. We, um, uh, due to that, we could add infrastructure to it because they would pay quite a much to have a kind of uh, a sportive environment around them instead of a kind of, uh, uh, kind of neighborhood with houses and uh, which could build, in that case we could rebuild that kind of uh, uh, places and at that very moment when you would occupy it with different means, suddenly we could do an experiment, which I'm quite happy uh, on it at the moment, I'm proud is that, uh, uh, that although it occupies a kind of uh, landscape, that suddenly we, we could imagine that we could not only make uh, ver horizontal landscapes, but maybe could in the end uh, make a kind of vertical landscapes. And that's based on the kind of uh, position in the center of this park, next to a kind of Union Square, but it's these two, uh, two uh, municipalities, and uh, which would be the main address and could be turned in a kind of vegetal downtown of um, uh, of Fleur de Mer, excuse me the word. Uh, so we calculated one uh, possibility, we uh, inserted this park with about 20% of occupation, which could lead to a kind of investment of about 150 million guilders, and which we, in which we could realize a kind of uh, park scraper of about 250 meter high, where you could, uh, 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 where you could actually uh, play in the lowest floor, have a kind of uh, swim on the second, ski on the fourth, have a forest on the fifth, have a mountaineering experience there, have an athletics uh, 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 tournament on the, the 19th floor, have a kind of uh, basin for ecological terms on the 20th floor and on the top floor you could even have a cemetery of course uh, next to what it would imply it could because it, it would immediately uh, uh, could be an investigation of a kind of a prototype of um, uh, highly uh, invested green in different areas, in high density. So it turns, it's, it, as it, it's as a kind of black hole within the kind of landscape that suddenly it turns into density at that very moment. Is that due to that we can uh, actually um, provoke an eco ecological uh, uh, deepening of the, of, the, uh, of the ecological theory by having this uh, uh, pull on top, or the, uh, it, it, we could give uh, water to every floor and every plant thinkable in different means. I'm going to show it later. And we could do to the different landscapes on top of each other, we could have given different types of access. And uh, uh, due to the fact that it, it's a building without elevation, we could experiment with energy in that way. Um, so that would be uh, then uh, uh, the proposal for uh, that park. We didn't get the park, but we got the building. And this is maybe what can be done now within the uh, current constraints, uh, which hopefully is realized in 2000, where I think it will be. And it's um, uh, where we now at the moment can make a series of landscapes on top of each other and do this kind of uh, uh, experiment on, uh, on energy and on, uh, on water. I will sh indicated. We start up with the lowest floor. Uh, it, uh, it's now in a plaza, so we have to start with nature. So we start with a swamp, a kind of biomassa. It will smell uh, terribly there. Uh, we add it with a kind of a series of um, uh, dunes, but then uh, upside down, so that it obtains a kind of interior uh, for a, a ski skiing area. 
it, uh, we add up with a kind of test, uh, a kind of park which is contained out of mini plants. So we put here the collection of Berlin, uh, but then say mini tomatoes, mini courgettes, mini, all the things which you can do artificially at the moment. Um, we put on top of it a kind of uh, double floor, a kind of oyster. There's something going wrong. Uh, uh, an oyster which could contain all the internal program and could uh, give a kind of internal landscape. Uh, on that top there will be a forest of different species of about uh, uh, 12 to 16 meter high. Uh, there will be a climate hall on that very top where we would experiment with different types of rain, snow and uh, mist. And it would be, uh, of course, almost finished with a water layer, uh, which could be seen as the ultimate pool and uh, a, a restaurant deck, uh, where actually the, uh, which would be the start of the water chain, which I showed later, and finalize it with the energy supplier of this building, a kind of windmill park on top of it. It will uh, that will be the building, not more and uh, not uh, less. <laughs> Uh, this is the water system, what it will uh, get. We start with a pond, we uh, filter it through plants. It will cause a rainfall on the floors underneath. It will cause uh, a kind of cascades on the, uh, on the elevations on that side. It will cause a mist in the forest. It will be used as a cooling for the, uh, the interior. It will be used for to, spoil the to, to spool the to toilets and, to, uh, and, the, and the vegetation in the artificial climate and it will uh, be gathered in this kind of sponge of biomass and will pushed up uh, by enormous pump to the highest fountain and uh, thinkable in that area. Uh, uh, since it has no facades, only we have to, 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 to supply a facade sometimes. We want to have here a facade of uh, warm uh, heat curtains that you, when you walk on this plaza, uh, go through a heat curtain and you find yourself in, uh, in a perfect natural environment. Um, so to have the most kind of the invisible facade thinkable, that way heat curtains here, a kind of uh, photovoltaic uh, sun curtains here, kind of new product. Uh, uh, there will be a kind of uh, waterfalls here on this facade and there will be, uh, where I have to find it, a kind of oh yeah, branches uh, on that side as a kind of facade tool. That costs energy because actually the most uh, spectacular uh, floor will be this one. And I'm happy that after 20, 30 years ago, I think uh, Kenzo Tanga proposed it uh, for Japan uh, Bay to make a kind of air dome of uh, hot air uh, so that you would have the ultimate um, roof thinkable. Um, with German engineers, we are now constructing this air dome with, um, made of 200 degree air so that snow melts, rain uh, uh, evaporates so that you can bath nakedly here and in, uh, in this cupola without having a roof in the snow. And uh, this costs enormous amount of uh, energy, this as well. So that's why we added up this enormous battery of uh, windmills and it gives maybe another and slightly ironical answer to, uh, uh, to the word ecology in an era where ecology has led to a certain doom where we were not supposed to work with uh, uh, energy where we have to uh, be secluded uh, uh, from the outer world through a kind of minimal windows due to that, that we now can play again with it because we just freely uh, use and make energy and in that way can in even make the most modernistic facade, the most modernistic roof thinkable, namely the invisible one. But this goes hand in hand of course with the infrastructure which is uh, different at f every floor because it's it tells about different difference. It tells about uh, uh, and about stacking as well. So in that way, the infrastructure will be different per floor, and the structure, of course, will be different and will almost look like a kind of balancing uh, uh, figure in the end. This whole uh, uh, building that will be then a possible facade, and hope to invite you for the opening in um, May 2000. And by this too, response. But actually, I did three now of them. I did. I said something about the buildings, how which we realized. I said something about the imaginable hypothesis behind our work. I said something about the current topics, namely uh, the infrastructure and the new nature. By this s series of observations, I would like to, fi to finalize my, this lecture and to ask you 
uh, to, uh, to, uh, to come to this uh, exhibition at the other side of the corridor. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Maybe before we uh, uh, go to the other room, if there are one or two uh, very poignant, precise, and brief questions, I'm sure that uh, Winnie would be happy to answer. I should also, before we go, go, go to the other side, mention that Cedric Price would be handing out the prizes for the winners of the contrafactualism at about 7.15, so it would be great if you come and uh, support your friends in that. But anyway, drinks? Have drinks, yes. Upstairs? upstairs? Yeah. yeah upstairs, yeah. So, questions? Okay. Your name. Uh, Joel, do you think you could pass the... Uh, or loud? Maybe. Well, it's just people over here one day. Over. There's another question. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned at the beginning of the lecture that in, um, architecture was in a way going in two directions. One is urbanism, the other is the landscape of the interior, which I think raised questions about uh, the status of the envelope. Um, and I think in your lecture, the uh, implication is that the status of the envelope is a product of zoning and that in turn the form which this zoning is producing has, in your words, an unexpected beauty. And I must say it is an, an unexpected beauty which I was able to see. Um, but the question to me is that some, at some other time in the lecture you have um, mentioned uh, that the generic was an opportunity for the architect to actually make an architecture which was highly individualistic Hmm. And I suppose that means the envelope too. And the other thing which strikes me is that your exhibition uh, is an exhibition of models, and models are essentially to show what is in between that urbanism and the landscape of the interior. So my, my question is, how do you actually see the status of what is in between infrastructure and the interior, so, or the envelope? I think your question is actually a, a kind of summary of the lecture. In, in a way, no, to be honest, because I was, uh, I, feel, I felt very paradoxical about different things. I tried to explain that paradox. Because uh, on one hand, we indeed studied about the envelope and we, uh, uh, in the Firemax book, and which, is, uh, not, which is there almost, but it's which, which I showed last year, which indeed questions uh, the envelope by producing it, by showing it, by extrapolating it, all the... Uh, uh, the uh, and always thinkable, so I, I agree on that. I, uh, on the other hand, I, I, I know that the model exhibition is a kind of uh, in-between state. It shows, it wants to, um, it wants to show how we work maybe with the interior more than with uh, the envelope, or when we do with the envelope, that it, uh, uh, that it wants to criticize it in a certain way, and it is maybe not that clear, but hopefully uh, uh, you with your knowledge architecture knowledge you can see through that and can, uh, can take that uh, position. It, and then the third observation you had was the moment that it turned into interior, uh, which is indeed in the VPRO building, where in the, the broadcasting building, where actually the, the interior as such has been, uh, 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 has, has been investigated uh, thoroughly to its limits and where the facade um, uh, was actually, should be not there. And that is another. Uh, state of the art, that there is an interbellum always in architecture. And maybe the VPRO, like this model exhibition, is a kind of interbellum, because uh, the, the, uh, there we wanted already to have this, uh, this heat facade, so no facade, but only this uh, department store heaters. So we worked already for, for two and a half months on it, to get, uh, uh, in order to get the rain out of it, that the, the, we, ex we made love more speed in the, in the heat. Uh, and, and in order to get the thieves out of it, we added electricity to it. <laughs> and in order to get the birds out of it, we added uh, uh, even extra heat to it. But a kind of uh, fried chickens would uh, come into the building. <laughs> and the, after two and a half months, uh, the government uh, said, no, 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 no way. <laughs> this is <laughs> it is not uh, there yet. So in a, in a way that I'm happy that now this vertical park will be there and that we uh, that we can test 
such, such uh, techniques. So one can say that, that in that way the, the, the broadcasting building um, uh, didn't reach the ultimate point uh, yet. Or it is, um, um, and I'm not, uh, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm still happy with, with, with the thing. Or I'm, uh, bec uh, because it's, uh, it's there and it, it, you, and it has a plan where, it, which has to, op due to the 55-55 the constraints, where you could test uh, that you can walk around without being at the facade and being as much interior as possible, and where actually other laws, bylaws of Dutch product and origin, namely the light constraints, have been tested as well and can be shown as a frozen figure. So th uh, th th that mm, these three remarks maybe answer your uh, paradoxical notion or the interstate of, uh, of this situation. <coughs> There's a question there. How this uh, building will be financed? Yeah. This will be financed by the government. Yeah. Um, to be honest, it will be, I can't uh, reply this question today. The, uh, at the 17th of no November, I, this, is a, this is another sneak preview which I gave to you today. It will be in the press and uh, at CNN at, uh, uh, at, at 17th of November in the evening. So then it's, it's, uh, it will be announced. I can't go into it. <laughs> What kind of news is that when you already know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's news. It's already pre <laughs> prescribed news sometimes, yeah. No, but maybe I will ask them the, the, the last question, relate partly sort of trying to bring some of these things together, which is that I think it's, it's, it seems that, as you said, there is a kind of difference between uh, like the broadcasting building and some of the things that you're trying uh, now with, uh, with, for example, with the, with the last project. I wonder whether you have any kind of observations about the, the, the actual resilience of, of the occupants, in a way, to, to architecture and to different sort of spatial conditions, that despite, it's the kind of irony again on one level, that despite the incredible effort that has gone into it, that at some point the office people do come with their IKEA, they do mm -hmm. occupy the building in a certain way or certain manner, the same way that the occupants of the housing Okay. In a in a way, so somehow, if you could maybe touch on this question of the relationship between now the idea of the horizontal surface and its possible but reoccupations in ways that might be different from but do you ask ways. Do, do you ask about the say the kind of the working of the building or say the social uh, reaction on, on top no, of no, the building? not necessarily the social reaction, but for example, when you touch on uh, Van Eastern and the idea of the social project, in a, in a way, it would be interesting to find out what is the relationship between the formal speculations now that are mm. different and the possible reoccupations in a way that is different mm. than, for example, the housing block in East Germany. Mm. There are, that, no, then indeed you, I would say, it's in, you ask uh, to the reactions of what can architecture do and what happens after tw two years after it has, it has been realized. How, in, in, for the Wozoko building, it's, I mean, the terrain is now under construction. It's, uh, it's there and, uh, and we, we made once a kind of collages or a kind of uh, Photoshop montages on, uh, uh, under these boxes, how the space would be occupied or by the most expensive uh, cars or by the, uh, the most delicate uh, uh, human beings, namely children, uh, underneath. So that kind of heaviness uh, will be, uh, um, or said the danger of heaviness mm -hmm. will have its equivalent of tenderness downstairs. Or, uh, and that's, I'm, I'm curious if that will happen. It should be indeed a kind of niche uh, where that paradox uh, could maintain. The cars are already, already there. Uh, they're not Cadillacs yet, nor uh, Jaguars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Still, a kind of uh, Have you had any dust. feedback from the office people, for example, in the way yes. that it, it, it the office has, people is, it is more interesting. them to, to use the space differently than how they expected. Yes. That's really the sort of thing. But office, the, the office block is, I think, uh, a good example of, uh, of is an example of how to uh, to work with uh, what happens afterwards. And uh, that we did it in several ways. We were as well already aware that things could occur. First, uh, there has been an enquête an uh, and research yeah. how uh, uh, if people would uh, communicate more within this building than in the other building. Uh, the answer was positive. 
There was uh, two reasons. Uh, first, because it was open. Now they saw each other, and they found out that, for instance, one of the most, comic, uh, most famous comics in Holland has just an office there, and uh, was always hidden in a barn or, uh, mm -hmm. before it, and uh, who could be met and who could be exchanged with ideas. Secondly, of course, they were forced to communicate due to the building in a way as well, and uh, uh, that they came due to complaints as well. So when one opens the window, then immediately the other came and said, I want to close it. And uh, uh, so communication would, was there. And uh, <laughs> that doesn't mean that some of the complaints, because uh, and I didn't talk about comfort tonight, because it's part of the topic last year, but comfort is, a, is a, I think, an incredible issue. As soon as you put it under pressure, then it becomes even a more important issue. Comfort is uh, something which, where you normally it's so comfortable in an office building that you fall asleep almost through all this comfort and to, because you're, suspect, uh, you, you're asked to work and to concentrate but everything is so smooth <laughs> that, uh, etc. And so in, in that way when density increases one becomes almost a kind of slave of comfort. One becomes more uh, by mind and less body one could say because all the sensations of the body are uh, away. So in that way with the client we suggested that this building should not be about total comfort, but about partly about discomfort as well. So we introduced only concrete floors and concrete uh, ceilings, so that uh, uh, whenever you want to occupy the terrain, you can uh, do that with a Persian rug or another uh, private rug and put it on top of it, so you have a kind of island of comfort somewhere there if you want it. And then, uh, so we added a kind of Spartanesque element to address comfort. On the other hand, we um, uh, added a certain fatigue to the building, namely ramps, uh, major stairs, super stairs and, and, uh, and slopes and hills, so that at a certain moment a kind of uh, alpine or mini alpine experience would be part of, the, uh, of this comfort uh, topic. What happened after that? Uh, some things, uh, because for instance the hill has now been occupied uh, by a group of people who don't want to leave the hill anymore because it's their favorite <laughs> and actually uh, act as a kind of toll booth for the people who want to pass by. There is uh, an uh, other group uh, which actually is not going to uh, broadcast next year anymore, so they have to leave the building anyway, but they uh, are on the st one of the stair rooms uh, very proud and they are so noisy uh, so that it is spreading through the building. And that, uh, th so that's one part of the topic which is, uh, 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 which is going on. And what we have to address, and we save money of it, is of course the acoustic treatment. That was the only thing which we did, could not calculate in advance. For 60%, 70% of the area we could do it, uh, and people from Puts had did it quite well. But for 30% we could not do it. And uh, um, so we were aware that that would lead to enormous complaints. And that came into the national press in the end because these people are highly, uh, 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 they, they're, they, they, they can use the press immediately since they are one of the broadcasting companies. So publicly, <laughs> like Ben van Berkel had his bridge, we had our acoustic thing. And, uh, but we, we had saved uh, about half a million of, uh, of guilders to do something with it. So what you will see now in the coming months is that uh, these objects will be inserted in the building and in a way the intensify in a way the use. So the, the concrete stairs will partly have leather and cow skin uh, elements to uh, there will be uh, and the youth department insisted on having uh, teddy bears so they will <laughs> use as a kind of acoustic treatment there will be a kind of <laughs> tents uh, where you can meet each other of uh, kind of beauty and filth etc. So there will be uh, in that way we could now do things which were unforeseen at that very moment. And of course, uh, 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 it's as, as soon as you want to, if you start with an experiment, you have to deal with a kind of uh, a way of dealing with it. I mean, in that way, the, to save a certain part of the budget is maybe a technique which could help uh, uh, to work with it afterwards. So that's what, that maybe uh, reacts directly on your question, how that could be uh, helped. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. See you over there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Edit to uh, maybe.